How's it going, everyone? Welcome back. Hope everyone is having a lovely day. Bengals making another move in free agency, this time going after former Miami Dolphin, former and now New England Patriot, Mike Gesicki. I have to tell you what, loved this guy in Miami. Loved, maybe I was, maybe I was attached to him for the fantasy value, but I'll tell you what, I was a 700 yard receiver for a couple of years, 85 plus targets, three straight seasons in Miami. His usage, his role was massive. In Miami, went to uh, went to New England. Didn't see as much production, but I mean, there was the you know New England running two tight ends. New England not running a quarterback. Yes, sorry, Mac Jones. Um, not, but you're going to see the production drop a lot just because of you know that situation he was in there. And now he has a chance. This is a very Bengals move. Now the reason Mike Gesicki really kind of fell off the map, uh, supposedly and understandably so as a tight end, was hey, you know the blocking. His blocking, his run blocking, his pass block, it just, it just wasn't that good. So over time, he kind of phased out of the Dolphins' def- or offense a little bit more. He didn't get as much of an opportunity in New England. And that makes sense. Completely understand. You, you, you got to have a guy that can protect the quarterback. And, you know, especially in my, you know, Miami, you see the way they like to run the football. If you were struggling there, he's going to find a different role. But this, again, it reminds me so much of what the Bengals, it's textbook Bengals. You bring in a guy like Mike Gesicki, a little bit cheaper on a deal, and you say, hey, we know what your past potential is. We know what your abilities are. Come out here, prove it for a year, and see if you can get yourself paid somewhere else. But we're going to use you for this year and just. Do the absolute get the absolute most we can out of like we did Hayden Hurst, like we did CJ Uzama. And that is a situation Gesecki walks in. Gesecki has a chance to walk in here and be the most productive of every tight end the Bengals Joe Burrow's ever had, offensive uh receiving yards wise. The question becomes again the rundown uh situations. And it reminds me again, we're talking about the running back. It talks about the different dynamics the Bengals that the Bengals are in such a position now to be versatile where I Entering what they've done in this specific frame, it's going to be interesting to see what they do because what we've learned is we have to be able to trust guys like Lou that can get the most out of his players. And you say, hey, now the Bengals got three safeties, and really the combination is Dax Hill's on the game uh, or on the field in the run game. You have uh, us, Gino out there on the field during the passing downs, and Jordan Paddles out there everywhere because he's a freak and just that talented. But the likelihood of them doing that probably very slim because you don't see teams substitute safeties like that. But then you look at the running backs, you have your bruising back, your guy that's inside the tackle and Zach Moss, you have your speed demon, your explosive monster stud of a player in Chase Brown. You got your, you know, your specialty, your role players. And that was something the Patriots, the dynasty Patriots did very, very well of was having their specific role players on the field that they, you know, Bill Butler got the most out of. Now we're looking at the tight end position. And well, where are we going with this? Gesecki, your running, uh, passing down specialist. Drew Sample, inking for three years, your specialist at block, run blocking, pass blocking. And again, with what the Bengals asked to do at tight end, it can, you know, you can still use Drew Sample in a pass game because you, you know how it is. Bengals love to do the little bootleg, little rollout, just to throw the ball in the flat to your tight end. Anybody can run that. You know, we've seen that work. And that's why the Bengals, I think they're not afraid to use these mid-level tight ends, I have to, you can't be, you know, express it enough. I know a lot of us love, you know, Brock Bowers, Michael Mayer, yeah, you know, Sam, Sam Laporta, that one, that one seems like it stinks, but nobody, I don't think we've seen Sam Laporta going that early in a draft, but the Bengals kind of in one of them systems where the way their scheme's set up, they can use just about any average tight end and make them look like an above average tight end and be okay. And I think that's why they haven't really pursued an expensive tight end or really drafted one high because what they've done is worked. Now it could be different without T Higgins. We'll see that could, you know, really shake things up the way they feel about things. But I think that's the system that works for them. And if you can save on a tight end position and excel somewhere else, that'll work. Spend money in other places. You know, if you can save on a wider tight end position, save on a running back position, you can go and say, you know, send that money to DJ Ritter, which I believe it's still rumored, but it sounds like he's getting, you know, as close to the money he was getting before for three years. If those rumors do end up being true, which would be a big key for the Bengals if that happens. Still, you can go somewhere else in the trenches on either side of the ball. We'll see. Again, I like what we're doing here in free agency so far. Not not big splashes, but I don't think you want to get tied down with the big splashes in free agency because oftentimes overpay a little bit and then you get into a cap situation here and be very methodical with your signing so far Bengals have been especially if you want to continue to contend like what they're doing love y'all's thoughts thank you for watching we'll see you next time